Pete Carroll, the Seahawks head coach, yesterday after a mock game that was held before which the anthem was played and multiple members of the team sat during the anthem, Pete Carroll was asked about the uh, the current atmosphere, the current climate, and where it could lead for the NFL. Here's some of what Pete had to say. You know, I heard, heard Doc Rivers talking today, and, and uh, Doc did, did a great job of, of stating that this is just ridiculous that we're putting up with this. I can't even imagine that this continues to happen. Uh, how, I don't know how somebody could ever do that under the circumstances and the awareness that everybody should have right now, but it continues to happen, so it continues to be a real problem. And uh, there's a lot of problems, and, but that's just one of the ones that just jumps out at us. And so um, I really applaud those guys for, for taking the night and, and uh, but that we all know that's not enough. It's just a statement, and the, the what is important, and everybody that's involved knows, is what we do about it, and what we keep doing to, to straighten things out and get things right. This whole thing is is, is ridiculous, and, and anybody that doesn't recognize that just isn't paying attention. And so, uh, yeah, we're on it too. Does it seem possible an NFL team would not take the field, or your team wouldn't take the field because of this? Uh, you know, every, anything's possible. I, I, I mentioned to the players, this is the year, it's, it's the protest season, you know. It's a season of protest. And, and uh, so we'll, you know, we'll handle ourselves as we do. And, um, but it's, this is, this is a protest that doesn't have an end to it until, until all the problems go away. Well, that, that's a hell of a goal. And I don't know how realistic it is, but, but I think that's what the players want to see they want to see that they're being heard yeah and that they're not being dismissed that it's not just lip service yeah we hear you we're taking care of that well what what are you doing right about it yeah white what coaches, is your plan white of action what are we doing right Everything. yeah no 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 go higher white Own, owners yes right i know you're right you're right, right. yeah every owner in the nfl other than shot Khan and kim pagula co-owner of the bills shot Khan, owner of the jaguars every other owner white what is the NFL collectively going to do about this? Now, look, the NFL has made a push for increased voter registration, and, 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 that, and that's good. That's one tangible thing. But I feel like this moment calls out for something more, and it needs to be a loud voice, it needs to be a unified voice, and it needs to be something that shows it's not just saying what needs to be said to check the box and get the players to not walk out. And, you know, Pete Carroll won't close the door on the possibility of a walkout. And, Chris, on top of everything else we are going to be monitoring as this season unfolds, that ever-present risk of a COVID-19 outbreak, that there's an ever-present risk now that something will happen that will cause players the night before a game, the day of a game, or right up until kickoff to say – we're not doing it. Yeah. We will not play. We refuse to take the field under these circumstances. Sports are a reward for a functional society, and we are currently not functional. No, we are not. We are totally dysfunctional. The most dysfunctional I've seen in my lifetime, and I know, you know, I'm about to be 40 and all that and haven't been around all that long, but this clearly takes the cake, and I think it is a real possibility. I mean, of course it is. And a place like Seattle, too, I mean, Pete Carroll, he can understand. Of course, it's hit home up there. That's been a real issue in the city of Seattle, you know, Portland, Oregon, still going on there. So that hits home to the football players. And Pete Carroll, you know, the one thing we've seen with his teams is he gets guys that are not afraid to speak their mind, that are pretty smart, you know, well thought out, deep thinkers who bring out these societal issues at times. And, yeah, they're going to confront them. And he's got the type of team and guys that are, you know, outside the box thinkers and, you know, just that type of guy to where they would be the type of team that would say, you know, screw off. We might not play this weekend or threaten that or not play or have some sort of really creative boycott because they have a leader like Pete Carroll, too, who doesn't squash that and ownership that doesn't squash that. And I respect that. And then this is the other thing that bothers me, Mike. Too much I hear this right now. And I've ever even had some friends say this to me. And it's pissed me off, like where they've gone, you know, uh, Pete Carroll just has to say that. He just has to say that because he's in a he's in a locker room with all these black people. And I've had people make comments to me like that. Oh, you just have to say that about politics or this issue because you're on TV. Do the networks make you say this? What? Like, get the hell out of here. No, this is how I feel. This is really how I feel. 
I'm not pressured into this by anything. I've seen it. I witnessed it. There's issues with white America, and it has to be fixed. That's all there is to it. And they're blinded by it, and their, their ignorance continues to just, you know, hurt the situation. And this, like, blind eye towards it is doing nobody any, any good. And it's amazing to me that people would be that cynical about an issue that is so fundamental to our fundamental right to life, right? That, that, that people would think there's anything other than a genuine care for our fellow human beings. We go back to the original founding documents. We talked about this extensively after George Floyd was killed. The right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It applies to everyone. Everyone is included in that. There should not be a summary execution, which is what George Floyd's murder was, which is what almost happened to Jacob Blake, and his life is forever changed, even if he fully recovers, because he's paralyzed from the waist down, and as they've said, it's going to take a miracle to repair him. So th th that's what's stunning to me. And I, I think a lot of this, Chris, a lot of the concern that the players have isn't necessarily for them, it's for their children. Yes, exactly. It's for their nieces and nephews. Right. It's for the next generation. And this is, I think, the, the message that I would have for anyone out there who is white, who doesn't quite get it. If you have a child, if you have a niece, if you have a nephew, if you have anyone under the age of 18 that you love and care about, friend, godchild, anyone, that that act of sending them out to the world is, is terrifying. So think of those kids and then pretend they're black and think about how you'd feel then sending those children out into this world that we currently inhabit. We'll continue the discussion when we return. PFT Live back after this. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.